I am Johnny Massacre and welcome to the Johnny Massacre Show. This is the Friday Night Massacre. It's kind of the Saturday Night Massacre, but all will be explained later. On tonight's show, we discuss non-fungible tokens, NFTs. What the fuck are these things? All shall be revealed. In other news, it has been 10 years to the day since the Fukushima meltdown in Japan. So I give you a recap from the shores of Japan themselves to explain exactly what's going on with the Fukushima meltdown disaster, 10 years post meltdown. Who's fucking with me? Give me a hell yeah! Non-fungible tokens. You might have seen this shit being talked about all over the internets. So we're going to go into this really fucking fascinating shit. A friend of mine came to me. <laughs> she's well fit. Um, she, she, she's a kind of celebrity, I guess, I guess in Japan. She's quite business savvy. And she was asking me, do you know what NFTs are? And I said, darling, I've got no idea. Please enlighten me. And she proceeded to explain to me what the fuck these things are. So she's all up on cryptocurrency and stuff. And an NFT is related to cryptocurrency. Let me find my notes on the Biden teleprompter and I'm going to explain exactly what this is. So an NFT, you might have seen this being talked about online. LeBron James has been involved with this shit among other celebrities and who else was doing it? Lindsay Lohan, I believe, is one of the main proponents of nfts and this, uh, i think kings of leon have released an album as an nft nft stands for non-fungible token so the etymology of this word comes from fungus and fungible is basically this legal term you often see it used in a court of law and in things to do with copyright and legal matters and fungible means something can be replaced for something else by an identical item in this case we're talking about non-fungible tokens meaning whatever this token is it can't be replaced for something else the way i think about the non-fungible token is or trying to replace a non-fungible token is, you know in Indiana Jones where he finds that golden idol and he wants to steal it, and then he has a bag of sand, and he takes the idol and switches it with a bag of sand. That's basically a metaphor for a non-fungible token. You can't fucking do that. If you try to do that, the doors will come down and a huge boulder will roll after you and try to crush you. You cannot exchange these things. You can basically only exchange non-fungible tokens for money. You can't swap it for anything like for like. An iPhone is fungible. If it breaks, you can replace it and get a new one. So, so you're probably thinking, what the fuck is he talking about? Let's find out exactly what this is on the website that has made non-fungible tokens possible. So we're going over to ethereum.org. Now, to even buy a non-fungible token, you have to own the cryptocurrency known as Ethereum. You literally have to. Once you buy that, or a small percentage of it, basically, once you get an Ethereum token, you are able to buy NFTs. You can sell NFTs, non-fungible tokens, without buying Ethereum. So anyone can start doing this right now, apparently. But in order to buy NFTs, you have to own the cryptocurrency known as Ethereum because NFTs exist on the Ethereum blockchain and nowhere else. They're uploaded to the Ethereum blockchain and that's where they exist and they're protected under that technology. So over on ethereum.org, they say NFTs are currently taking the digital art and collectibles world by storm. Digital artists are seeing their lives change thanks to huge sales to a new crypto audience and celebrities are joining in as they spot a new opportunity to connect with fans. But digital art is only one way to use NFTs. Really, they can be used to represent ownership of any unique asset, like a deed for an item in the digital or physical realm. If Andy Warhol had been born in the late 90s, he probably would have minted Campbell's Soup as an NFT. It's only a matter of time before Kanye West puts a run of Yeezys on Ethereum, and one day owning your own car might be proved with an NFT. What is an NFT? NFTs are tokens that we can use to represent ownership of unique items. They let us tokenize things like art, collectibles, even real estate. 
They can only have one official owner at a time and they're secured by an Ethereum blockchain. No one can modify the record of ownership or copy paste a new NFT into existence. NFT stands for non-fungible token. Non-fungible is an economic term that you could use to describe things like your furniture, a song file or your computer. These things are not interchangeable for other items because they have unique properties. Fungible items, on the other hand, can be exchanged because their value defines them rather than their unique properties. For example, Ethereum or dollars are fungible because one Ethereum, one US dollar is exchangeable for another Ethereum US dollar. Okay, are you confused yet? Well, what this basically means is you can prove ownership of something. Once you turn something into an NFT, that thing has a record of existence that is stored on the blockchain. And blockchains are famous for their security. Once it's on the blockchain, it's out there forever. You can't destroy it, you can't steal it, you can't delete it, but you, you could kind of try to steal it if you get someone's key and password. But basically, you, as long as the person doesn't give away their information, once something becomes an NFT, once something's on the blockchain, once something becomes a token, cryptocurrency is a token, a percentage of a crypto coin is a token, or an NFT is a token, anything on the blockchain is a token. Once it's there, it's basically secure, can't be modified, edited, or destroyed. So NFT is kind of setting something in stone, etching it into the fucking stones of time where it cannot be modified. And in a universe now where we don't own anything, is it any surprise that there's such a buzz around NFTs? How much music do you own? Generation Z, all of their music is consumed via streaming. They don't own any of the music, they just rent it for a subscription. Same goes with movies for Netflix. Soon all video games will be like this. Soon apparently you're, you might not even own a car because we're all going to be driving AI cars. So people are now starting to crave ownership. They actually want to own something. And what's the best way to own something digital? Because if you have something digital, how do you prove that is yours when millions of people can copy it and can modify it? Well, the best way to prove it is to upload it to a blockchain. Blockchain proves ownership and it sets it in stone and it can't be modified and it cannot be destroyed. And people want to have ownership. The crazy thing is people are selling NFTs online. People are selling artwork. People are selling movies and videos and things like that. People are digitizing their collection of whatever into an NFT and when they're selling the NFT online you if it's a picture you can download the picture online so you can steal it so you might ask well what's the point you're creating an NFT which means it's the original but then you can just get it anyways the point is you can prove it is the original with things in the physical realm such a oh my god are you fucking actually serious hold on a minute one two one, two, one, two. What? One, two, three, four. Okay, sorry, now I was just looking at something. Yeah, so with things in the physical realm, you it's easy to prove ownership, I guess, because if you get it, for example, some memorabilia from a movie, you can get it signed, you can get it dated, you can get it officially minted so everyone can see that it's yours. But now, when ownership of things is moving away from physical and everything's becoming digital, you still want to prove you're the owner. So the best way to prove is if you if you create an NFT, some people say, or one of the best ways to prove ownership of something securely is to put that thing on the blockchain. So imagine a song, for example, before it's all done with CDs and records and stuff. If you wanted to prove ownership of a song that hadn't been released yet, if you're a DJ, you're cutting something to dub plate and you, you want to protect it. Do you know what, how you used to prove ownership? You'd put it in an envelope and you'd mail it recorded mail to yourself and date the envelope. So when it arrived, that means if anyone steals your song, you have it proved here with a date and a physical copy that it's yours. But now that doesn't exist anymore and it's all done online. Okay, you've got a record on your computer and you've got some dates and stuff. But if you really want to make something secure and prove you're the owner, you can put that song online as an NFT into the blockchain and that means you are unequivocally the owner. Nobody can fuck with you. And imagine if you want to sell something digitally. There's no physical copies at all. And the thing you're making is very special. Maybe you're a legacy artist and you're only going to make one copy. Like the Wu-Tang Clan made only one copy of an album. And then it was bought by the farmer bro, Martin Screlly. Um, if you want to do that in the digital realm, 
you're going to have to prove ownership and you're going to have to transfer ownership to someone. And if you want to make big money in an auction, if you register it on the blockchain as an NFT, that might just be enough to kind of set the cogs in motion and get you a sale of an item that will net you a lot of money. And that's what people are doing online. People are paying, in some cases, millions of dollars for songs and for artwork that have been transferred into NFTs. People crave ownership in a digital world where we own nothing. And guess what? We've already seen with some major companies such as Google, YouTube, and Twitter, if you don't align with their political views, they'll cancel you. And so all these other companies you rely on, such as Spotify, who are woke as fuck, look at their weird playlists, and Netflix, who are woke as fuck also, look at their documentaries. These companies will happily blackmail you and cancel you from their service if you don't align with their political views and they'll brand anything they disagree with as hate speech one day. Certainly that's going to happen, in my opinion. And so therefore, why be at the mercy of these people and... Why sign up for services that are integral to your life, which if taken away will fuck up your life. And that basically leaves you open to be blackmailed by these companies to align with their political views. Why do that shit? Well, the reason you do it is because there's no alternatives. So you kind of, you're caught uh, between a rock and a hard place. If you want to watch a movie, it's basically going to be Netflix. If you want to stream, it's going to be Apple Music and Spotify. But, But aside from these major corporations dominating Uh, different fields of the industry such as entertainment music sport politics and whatnot and the transfer of information such as uh, google and whatnot there is still some elbow room to own your own stuff so that you're not going to be blackmailed by any of these companies okay let's say i make a song that's offensive and someone won't publish it and that's what happened back in the day and that's why my youtube is so political i'm on a crusade to stop censorship imagine that happens someone wants to censor your song or you put it on spotify and someone goes that's hate speech and they get rid of it in the same way that amazon are burning books and, sh- and stuff digitally well in that case you can just release the song as an nft and you are the owner. You have sole ownership. No one can manipulate it. No one can destroy it. No one can take it away. Once it's on the blockchain, you are good. Unless, of course, Ethereum, the owner of the blockchain, decides they're going to get all political and destroy your stuff. But I I, I don't think that's going to happen. So making an NFT means not only is it secure, not only is it safe, it can't be destroyed, modified, or manipulated. It means you are unequivocally the sole owner of this and that decentralizes whatever is put on there blockchain decentralizes things before you would have to put your money in a bank and you're basically you're beholden to the bank and in some cases banks will even cancel people and say you can't bank with us and that's that's happened to various people for whatever reason some people even get letters and say they can't bank with the bank anymore this basically makes you the bank. You become the bank. You don't, you're not going to be controlled by anyone. You are empowered. And so this is empowering creators to own their stuff and do whatever the fuck they want with it. They're not going to be fucked over by a bank. They're not going to be fucked over by Spotify, by YouTube, by an image service, by a hosting service, whatever. So that's kind of what an NFT is. Well, that is what an NFT is. So there's an interesting website here. I just want to read you something from it. It is NPR.org. They say, what's an NFT and why are people paying millions to buy them? They say the artist Grimes, Elon Musk's wife, recently sold a bunch of NFTs for nearly $6 million. An NFT of LeBron James making a historic dunk for the Lakers garnered more than $200,000. The band Kings of Leon is releasing its new album in the form of an NFT. See, an NFT could just be one or you can release multiples of this with exactly the same information and code so multiple copies of the same nft or you can release multiple copies each with different um um, codes or you can release shit loads of nfts all with the same code and one of them has a different code and one of them is kind of unique so that's what kings of leon are doing here they're not just releasing one album like wu-tang clan did when martin screlly the farmer bro bought it the article says At the auction house, Christie's bids on an NFT by the artist Beeple are already reaching into the millions. And on Friday, Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey listed his first ever tweet as an NFT. That was probably my favorite flavor of Starbucks latte is... Here's a tweet from Tane Jaipura. He says, digital artist Beeple posted a new work of art online every single day for 5,000 days. Those pieces have been brought together in one digital collage 
named Every Days, the first 5,000 days, that's a lot of days, minted as an NFT and is being auctioned off by Christie's. The current bid is $3 million. So this guy made a piece of digital art every day for 5,000 fucking days. And this is what it looks like. I think that's quite beautiful. This does not exist in the physical form. So if you're going to sell this something, you have to prove who is the owner. And if you're just going to send someone a fucking image on a zip drive, that doesn't really prove that it's yours. How are you going to say when it comes to the crunch that I own this artwork with an NFT? It means this is the original. It means you now unequivocally own it and you can prove that. So that is pretty fucking interesting. I love that. That's a slightly more down to earth description of the NFT. And they do go on with a little bit more information that I would like to read you because it is pretty fucking fascinating. Now, what the fuck is going on? My computer is being a massive cunt. It's funny, every time I stream, there's always these weird glitches and gremlins in the fucking system, but we plow through it. So let me just get this article back up for your viewing pleasure. And while I pretend that I know what I'm doing, I'll just give you some more of my honey-like radio voice to keep you entertained, tickled and titillated. Okay, so back to the article. They say, Safe to say, what started as an internet hobby among a certain subset of tech and finance nerds has catapulted to the mainstream, which leads to some obvious questions. Chief among them, what on earth is an NFT? It stands for non-fungible token. Non-fungible meaning you can't exchange it for another thing of equal value. A $10 bill can be exchanged for two $5 bills. One bar of gold can be swapped for another bar of gold of the same size. Those things are fungible. An NFT though is one of a kind. The token refers to a unit of currency on the blockchain. It's how cryptocurrency like Bitcoin is bought and sold. Quote, remember those days where people would line up for the newest Nike Air Jordan sneakers at the physical store? This is the new digital equivalent, said Katie Horn, a general partner at the venture capital firm Andreessen Horowitz. It's everything that brings together culture, and it's also a bet on the future of e-commerce. Still, what exactly do you get when you buy an NFT? This question unleashes a fury of debate among NFT enthusiasts. The answer is not simple. Are you buying what amounts to an internet trophy, clout, a feeling, a digital collector's item? Perhaps, but you are also purchasing a kind of barcode, almost a certificate of authenticity that serves as proof that a certain version of something is uniquely yours. The underlying thing that you're buying is code that manifests as images, said Donna Reddell, who teaches courses on crypto digital assets at Fordham Law School. You're buying a different format of art. NBA Top Shot tweeted, Hail to the King. Andy 8052 acquired this serial number one legendary LeBron James moment from our From the Top Series 1 set for $71,455, an iconic tribute dunk in Deed 100, the top acquisition for any NBA Top Shot moment so far. Very nice pickup for the collection. So, okay, this is some crazy shit. So what a lot of people are doing with NFTs, people are looking at ways to exploit NFTs and make money. One way they're doing it is, They'll film something, like I'm filming the Johnny Massacre show. And then when I say something cool, like, Lada Marcy, or hell yeah, they'll edit that video out, and then they will upload it as a video, as an NFT, and then sell that moment to someone who can officially own me going, hell yeah, they actually own me saying that. And they can prove they own it, and then they can sell it on. So what's basically happening here is this. The reason why cryptocurrency became such a thing is because so many people bought it. The more people that buy it, the higher the value goes, right? Because there's obviously the demand is going up and the supply is going down because there's a finite amount of Bitcoins. And in the same way, this is kind of turning digital art into a currency. The more people that are buying it and investing in it, the higher the value goes. So if you buy it, the value is going to go up. There's a lot of buzz around it. Oh, look, all these millionaires are buying this. Maybe I should buy one too. And then other people are willing to buy and the value will maintain or increase. That's what's going on. Grimes, Elon Musk's wife is, or girlfriend or wife, is has 
basically sold things as NFTs. People have bought it. All these high profile people are doing it. NBA, LeBron James, all this stuff. The value is going up. And then people with a lot of money who are just interested in new formats and new avenues who are entrepreneurial will look at something like this and then they'll spend a bit of money. They'll get something and then they'll sell it on. It's basically, it's like gambling on the stock market. That is what NFTs are currently. So kind of fascinating stuff when you think about it. The article says, but no, when you buy an NFT, you're usually not getting the copyright or trademark to the item. And just because you own an NFT doesn't mean there aren't endless other versions of that thing on the internet. There will be. It's the internet. Still, NFT enthusiasts say owning a piece of code in a blockchain has shown itself to be an incredibly valuable thing. Quote, you're not buying the picture, said Jake Brookman, founder of cryptocurrency investment company CoinFund you're buying the property rights to the picture. It's kind of like with music, right? If I make a song and I only release one album like Wu-Tang Clan did that Martin Shkreli bought, the Farmer Bro, they still own the sound recording copyright so they can reproduce it if they want. They still own the musical copyright because they wrote the lyrics and they produced the music. But Shkreli owns that actual item and he's the only person who owns it and he can prove it because it's obviously minted and written somehow. That's basically what's going on with NFTs, but it's all done digitally. So then there's people who are making loads of money on this apparently. Look at this. I just sold my crypto art for $3,000, like just right now. This is my art piece and it took 24 hours to sell for two Ethereum, which is $3,000. Oh my gosh, I can't believe this. This is crazy. Ethereum is like a cryptocurrency. It's like the second largest cryptocurrency behind Bitcoin. And now artists like me who've never been able to make any money on their digital art can now make money on their digital art. Like this is insane. And I know you're thinking, why would I buy a digital art piece if I could just like copy it online? It's an NFT. So basically it's like certified, like you have the original piece, kind of like the Mona Lisa, you know, there's a whole bunch of copies of the Mona Lisa, but there's only one Mona Lisa, one, and they have it. And that's why it's so dope because it's so rare. So start buying crypto art. So this kind of comes across like bullshit. This comes across like Ethereum commissioned some PR company to do an advertisement for why people should start investing in NFTs because like it's amazing. But I, she kind of did sum it up reasonably well. And I like the way she compared it to a Mona Lisa. There's only one original, but there are loads of copies. And how do you prove that if it's digital? Well, of course, with an NFT. So I spoke to my mate about this, who's really, really into crypto. I call her the crypto queen. And this is my summary of what she said. So she said, people, mostly collectors and artists, are trying to make a new way to collect things and a new sales path. It's a new world order, according to her, potentially. She said it's kind of rebellious because you get to sell whatever you like as long as there's demands. And I think that comes with the decentralized thing because it's weird how it's rebellious not to be a government slave. But if you're not controlled by the government or the banks or the authorities or the powers that be, it's kind of like the resistance, the rebels. And that's a little bit like what NFTs seem to be. I asked her, should people be doing this? And she said, I'm a capitalist, man. I always say, yeah, as long as there's demand, you hop on it. See, that's why we're mates. Love that attitude. But she said, it's your responsibility. So do your research before you get involved on this. So my thoughts at this point, it seems like people are doing this for the novelty. It seems like everyone's hungry to be up on the new thing. And if it's kind of confusing and weird, people fucking love it. Uh, it obviously wasn't designed to be confusing and weird, but it, it kind of is. So it, basically what I'm saying is there's layers to this thing. There's depth, there's new technology like blockchain, and then it's interwoven with the the exclusivity of, of one esoteric type of cryptocurrency, which is Ethereum. And then it all ties into kind of creative stuff, memes and artwork and videos and shit and sport. And then there's the gambling element of it, which is hot topic right now with crypto and loot boxes or surprise mechanics as the video game developers are trying to rebrand them so they don't get regulated by governments around the world. So it's a bit of all of those things, I think. And people want to show how much money they've spent, right? If you 
why do people wear Louis Vuitton bags and stuff? Well, it's because, it, hey, look, look how much money I fucking spent. Why do people eat grapes in Japan? Look how much fucking money I spent. They cost like $100 for grapes in Japan quite often. And so people want to show how much money they've spent. And if you're going to get something digitally in a world where increasingly you can only get things digitally, you want to be able to say, I fucking bought this. Look how much money I spent. It's in my fucking Ethereum wallet, bitches, on the blockchain. So some people criticize this for climate change. They say the amount of you know, fossil fuels required to run these blockchains is terrible. Okay, so the people saying that are tweeting on their fucking iPhones, which have been created using more fossil fuels than blockchain could ever hope to do. So all that climate change criticism is bullshit. My mate says, if you criticize blockchain for climate change damage, you should stop using your car and your iPhone. So I, I totally agree with her. And okay, Logan Paul that that fuzzy headed wanker who looks like an anthropomorphic q-tip and so does his brother he sold a pokemon card and also moments of him which we saw earlier with the nba thing of him opening cards those said cards and he sold them for fucking shit loads of money fair play to the guy this is some fucking wild shit this will give you a really strong image of what the fuck is going on with these pokemon cards and you know what I haven't even put the right fucking link in this, so we're going to have to do it live. So Logan Paul NFT Pokemon. It's pretty much going to be the first thing that, that comes up. I really hope I can find the same article because it was so, so good. It really explains so well what was going on. Oh, man, do you know what? I haven't fucking got it. You have to bear with me because if I can find this, it's super, super awesome. You've got to see it. Please be patient. Elevator music. Okay, see, what he basically did was he made some custom, he turned himself into a Pokemon card and then he he sold that as an NFT for shit loads of money and then he also bought loads of rare Pokemon cards, alpha Pokemon cards, the original release of pokemon cards which are worth so much money and he opened all the packs and as he opened them he was squealing with delight and then he edited those moments and uploaded them as nfts as moments when he opened the, the package he went wow he'd take that on a three second clip for example upload it as an nft and people were spending tens of thousands of dollars on each moment he uploaded maybe i don't know 20 plus or 50 moments of him opening pokemon cards and sold each one of those vi videos as an nft for tens of thousands of dollars each on top of the custom Pokemon card that he made and minted as an NFT. Let me let me load this on Safari because I'm gonna be able to see what this was. I think I opened it on Safari. Logan Paul NFT. And then on this article, there was a snapshot of all the different moments he was selling with the price underneath. And it was just fucking mind blowing okay i found it so let's go over to be in crypto and see what is happening with logan paul here we go so they say logan paul makes new nft pokemon card unboxing highlights sells out youtuber logan paul had previously partnered with bondly finance to launch his own nft so this is why nfts are so lucrative right now and people are spending so much money because people like logan paul high profile people Lindsay lohan are, are increasing the value because they're investing in it that's why this is happening and that's why people are considering investing and buying at these inflated prices because the more famous people that come in and inflate the value of nfts the higher you can sell your original investment for the article says pokemon card unboxing clips now turned into new nfts paul's pokemon unboxing nft moments sold out quickly so the article says after the auction of his two decade old pokemon cards logan paul is back to making headlines in the NFT scene. Highlights of his Pokemon trading card unboxings have been repackaged as NFTs and are now sold out. American YouTuber and boxer Logan Paul partnered, who gets his ass kicked whenever he boxes, partnered with Bondly Finance to launch his personalized NFT early last month. Paul also announced the purchase of first edition Pokemon booster packs worth $2 million prior to the partnership. The value cards were auctioned and unboxed in a live stream held on February 27th. Paul turned the highlights of the Pokemon box break into new NFTs. These highlights were packaged into moments which are now sold out. 
tweet from Peter Jennings. Wow, Logan Paul turned his box break highlights into NFTs. Every moment sold out. So look at this. This is him uploading the moments, the small video clips to the Ethereum blockchain as NFTs, turning these moments into tokens and then selling each one off for $20,000 because whoever buys them wants to claim original ownership. They know their investment is secure. It can't be broken, defrauded or or disappeared unless, of course, China nukes the Ethereum blockchain servers. Let's hope that doesn't happen. And each one's selling for $20,000 or $15,000. Fucking incredible stuff. The article says, Paul had earlier expressed his newfound obsession with the fast-growing NFT space. In a press release, he said, I'm thrilled to partner with Golden for the biggest Pokemon unboxing ever. This is a newfound obsession of mine, and I'm so excited to share it with other enthusiasts around the world. Okay, I did knock him. And I would probably knock him out in a boxing match. But the, he's, he's awesome. I, I don't care what anyone says. It's easy to discredit people who are booming on social media and booming in all these kind of trend gener generation Z sites and stuff. But that is what the modern day entrepreneur is like. That's where the eyeballs are. That's where the market is. He's selling whatever he does for $20,000. He's partnering with these major brands who are desperate to rebrand themselves and be associated with youngsters and cool stuff. And what he's doing is very entrepreneurial and I cannot knock it at all. All the people knocking it could never do it. They don't have the, the image to do it. They don't have the public image or the aesthetic or the know-how or just the snap of youth in order to get involved with something like this. So I just think, yeah, Logan Paul, very shrewd with all this stuff. After the auction of his Pokemon cards, Logan Paul stated he'll be joined by Golden Auction CEO Ken Golden to unbox the packs before sending them out to the winners. His decision to launch new NFTs with the unboxing highlights further supports the NFT narrative. Like his inaugural NFTs, the new unboxing moments quickly won the hearts of many. The entire collection is now reportedly sold out. NFTs continue gaining traction. Logan Paul is one of the most popular names in the scene and his staggering results speak for him. Many claim his activities is one of the catalysts towards the unprecedented growth of the NFT sector and it seems to hold some water. On February 19th, Paul launched the first Logan Paul NFT. He recorded the groundbreaking 1 million in sales in the first 30 minutes and 3.5 million on the first day. The NBA, and we've mentioned this before, top shot. NFTs have continued to set the bar higher and higher. It recently crushed the 24-hour sales record, amassing over 34 million million in sales in one fucking day if people are willing to pay it and you can suddenly monetize digital things in a way that's never been done before then fucking roll with it capitalism baby so so back to the biden teleprompter my massacre friends and if you're just joining us I am Johnny Massacre, and this is the Friday Night Massacre, where we are discussing what a non-fungible token, aka NFT, is. But if you've been watching from the top, just in case you forgot to drop a little dough on the Johnny Massacre show, click the donation link in the box below. Lada mercy. It really helps you when you do that. Fund the massacre, streamlabs.com forward slash Johnny Massacre. You can pay via PayPal or credit card. And if you do it, you're going to get more amazing YouTube shit like this. So. Hmm. How do, you, how do you get involved in this? So firstly, you have to upload your art. You can do it right now without Ethereum as a seller. And websites store it. There's various third-party websites that will host the NFT. And when the purchase is made, I believe then it becomes an NFT and gets uploaded to the blockchain. And the person who purchases it pays the associated costs of this so this is called a gas fee so any kind of work that's done on the blockchain it doesn't just happen automatically there's people out there that's actually making it happen it's a peer-to-peer -peer network and the peers or people or nodes they're all connected together there's also people mining crypto and stuff like that and there's various costs associated with uploading it and maintaining it depending on the complexity of the tokens so it's not for free so when it goes on the blockchain there has to be some associated fee which is known as gas and this is a term that's unique to the Ethereum blockchain, not other blockchains, um, apparently. And so you upload your, your NFT to be, so to speak, to a third party website. And they're really good. We'll look at them in a second. And then from there, when a buyer buys it, then it will get uploaded to the Ethereum blockchain and the fees associated with that will be added on to the buyer. So that basically means you don't need to purchase Ethereum crypto in order to create an NFT. But if you want to buy it, you do have to own Ethereum NFT. I mean, this could just be an amazing scam in order to 
get people involved with Ethereum because Bitcoin is the main one. But if you can create something interesting like NFT and force people to purchase Ethereum in order to use it, it's a great way to promote Ethereum. But if that's true, it is a master plan that's on par with any Christopher Nolan script that I can think of. So the buyer buys the NFT, they pay the associated gas fee relating to the cost of turning the NFT into a token on the blockchain. And I guess gas is just a metaphorical physical energy, the imagined cost of, of getting it and storing it on the server in the giant server farms that require juice or gas to keep running. And essentially gas is like a tool to calculate how much work is being carried out to create and store your token. This shit doesn't run itself, you see. I've already said this. I'm just going from the Biden teleprompter, but bear with me. Quote, procedures that need more computational resources that cost more gas than the operations that usually require very few computational resources. Okay, so now I'm just reading from the Biden teleprompter and I'm getting confused like Joe Biden. But let's soldier on. So then once you've uploaded, once you've uploaded your NFT to the blockchain and the purchase has been made, you have the NFT and then importantly, you have a date associated with it and a unique number. And that's the critical thing. The date and the unique number proves your ownership. Just like back in the day to copyright your own music as a record producer, you would mail a CD to yourself with recorded delivery. This does the same thing. The recorded delivery here is the unique number and the date that you wrote on the envelope is basically written digitally within the Ethereum wallet. So how to verify your NFT and prove that this is the original. Well, as I said, every NFT has a token ID. This is basically a blockchain number. You can see it in your wallet. That's it. That proves your ownership along with the date. If it's on Ethereum, since uh, tokens on Ethereum cannot be manipulated or changed or, or removed, it's the real deal. But it could be a fake because if somebody downloads the image of your NFT, even if you've uploaded that NFT to blockchain, someone who's taken the image can upload the copy of your image to blockchain and sell that off. So there is potential for cheating here, nonetheless. So I've got a random quote here and it says, the NFT is a version, is a version that claims primacy because its identity is stabilized on the blockchain. However, the original remains impossible to identify as original. So before it's uploaded to the blockchain, the one that's on your computer, because there's no NFT of that before the NFT exists, you can't verify that as an original. So basically what this means is the best way to verify a digital file as the real deal is to make an NFT of it, that's all. And then you can sell it, do whatever you like with it, monetize it. So there's more info on here from my friend. She says, once out there, the NFT will remain in the blockchain forever. So be careful what you put out there. So, it's kind of like it's on the internet, it's there forever. You've got to be careful when you put it out there. Make sure you want to put it out there and you're happy with your work. So as for where to look at NFT, so this show is about to get a lot more colorful. Rarible.com is the big one. So if you go onto this website, it's fucking nuts. Lindsay Lohan, she was the top seller yesterday. And now she's gone off the list. But this is what a site looks like, a marketplace for NFTs where you can upload them and buy them. So the top sellers in one day, this guy has sold. So two Ethereum is about $3,000. This guy sold, let's have a look. So this is going to be 33 times 3,000. So he's basically sold $100,000 worth of FNTs in one fucking day. And here you can see the NFTs. We've got various pieces of artwork. We've got a pink fucking unicorn holding its balls. Lovely. And it's a humanoid unicorn, a humicorn. You've got some weird type of meditative yoga-like card. We've got some creepy shit that Joe Rogan would fucking love. We've got some kind of rotating 3D image of an alien, a happy looking alien. The highest bid right now is about $1,500. And yeah, these are all the NFTs. A lot of them are really creepy. State of the Union, we've got, oh man. So there's, it looks like there's some woke stuff on here as well. We've got some big titty ones and it's called Big Boobs. 
fuck it, let's spend some money on some tits. You can see how this works, man. You just, it's trying to get people to buy. Everyone's curious going on this website. What is an NFT? Oh, there's big boobs. Oh, Elon Musk's girlfriend bought this shit. Fuck it, I'll buy one too. Maybe the value will go up. Maybe I can sell it off later. We've got some pink cupcakes. No donuts, unfortunately. Look, we've got a little 8-bit thing. See, people from the 90s who grew up with this kind of stuff, if you pull at the nostalgia heartstrings of people searching for NFTs, they might just invest, they might just pull the trigger. If you hit someone with nostalgia, they're much, much more likely to drop the cash or the coinage or the crypto, I should say, in this case. So this is what NFTs look like. Fucking bizarre, right? Bizarre shit. And as I said yesterday, one of the top sellers was Lindsay Lohan. So that was, she was probably paid by Ethereum or by this website to get involved in order to just attract more attention to it because that's one of the reasons I'm talking about it when I saw it I saw Lindsay Lohan I thought fuck some high profile celebs are using this might have to get involved and one of my there's a seller called Waifu which I was looking at which was quite funny hopefully that's still here let's have a look at Waifu so Waifu is the Japanese English the Jinglish for wife and I can't see it now. It's unfortunate. I lost the link. But someone was selling a whole collection of Japanese manga of big boobed Japanese women, which was uh, kind of a little bit like this. And hey, what can I say? I did look through it. Look, here's the Rari Waifu going at about seven hundred dollars. And what am I fucking looking at here? So, so look, we've we've look. There's a nude one. Fuck, I'm gonna get censored for that. Oh, I've got to turn it off. So there's new shit. There's all kind. This is like looking into a unicorn skinned Pandora's box. We talked about a lot of technical stuff, about the numbers, about the data, about the logic and the science, so to speak, behind blockchain. And now we're seeing the front end, the aesthetic, the creative stuff, the meme stuff, the unicorns, the rainbows, the big tits. NFRs is pretty fucking interesting. When it comes down to the front end and your eyeballs are being stimulated by all this weird nostalgic pixel art and anime and boobs and videos and NBA, you kind of just want to get the money out and blow it. So it's hard to get your head around, but quite simply, this is secure ownership in a digital age where ownership is now becoming a rarity. So head to rarible.com if you want to make your own NFT and try to sell it, try to make $3,000 like that chick earlier did, so people are making a lot of fucking money off this. Here's the fucking proof. We touched on this earlier and it's on the fucking New York hunting time so they've paywalled it, which is really annoying. But the headline is JPEG file sells for $69 million as NFT mania gathers pace. Every day is the first 5,000 days by the artist known as Beeple set a record for digital artwork in a sale at Christie's. So we mentioned that before. There it is. $69 million fucking dollars. Just incredible. So I'd recommend researching this and taking a look, even if you're not going to get involved. it's still something worth knowing about because it is a hot topic and everybody is talking about it. So my summary from the Biden teleprompter of NFTs, it empowers creators, it decentralizes the art world. There's no galleries, there's no politics, there's no one who's going to take your art down and cancel you. It's just you. You are in total control. Your assets are being, your assets are controlled by yourself only and once you upload something to the blockchain, that transaction, so to speak, the tokenization of whatever you're doing has to be verified by other nodes in the network. And that means it's kind of like interleaving your digital footprint and making it uncopyable and totally verifiable and uncorruptible. It's kind of like the, the copy protection data on CDs about how it's spread all over the CD. So if one part of it is damaged, it's the whole thing doesn't break. So your transaction is verified by various people, meaning it can't be fraudulent. And then once it's, it's stamped and minted, it becomes part of a block. And that block's existence is basically defined by the block before it and the block after it. So it's all connected. It's all interleaved. You can't destroy it. You can't remove it. It's completely secure. It's decentralized. It can't be changed at the whims of your shadowy, tyrannical big tech, big brother tech overlords or big tech brother overlords, 
Which term do you prefer for Facebook, YouTube, Google, Instagram, Apple, and all those wankers? Big tech brother or big brother tech? Please let me know in the comments. And so you're in control. Your assets are secure. And that's it, really. And it's become this weird kind of buzz right now, this perhaps inflated kind of boom in the world of entrepreneurialism. So be careful with this shit because if you buy it and can't sell it, you're going to be fucked. And I guess my final thought is, this is just collecting, man. It's collecting. It's fucking collecting for the year 3000. The psychology of collecting is what this is all about. Look at all these basketball cards I've got. Or look at this memorabilia that I've got. And this is where I got it from. And this is who did it. And look, I can prove it. I've got the certificate of authenticity. It's, it taps into the psychology of collecting, but in the year 3000. It's a kind of future imagination of the basic human desire to collect and hoard things and show it off. And yeah, th there were a few tweets on this that I wanted to bring up that I found just before I did this show and didn't upload to my computer. And one of them's from Peter Schiff, that renowned, um, um, I, I don't even know what he is. He's basically like an investor economist. He's kind of like an um, economist genius. And he was famous during Wall Street. I think he went and talked on the front lines to a lot of people who were pissed off about Wall Street. And he's famous for not holding his tongue and being based as fuck and just telling people what he thought about the financial industry, trying to spread some truth, not getting angry or worked up about it. And he did a tweet on this and he, he laid into it and said, he basically gave a bad image of NFTs. And he said, using overpriced ether to buy overpriced NFTs reminds me of the old joke about a guy who tries selling his pet dog for $10,000. Since he can't find any buyers actually willing to pay $10,000 in cash for his dog, he ends up trading his 10,000 dog for two $5,000 cats. So that basically means you're gonna buy some NFT for whatever, $10,000, let's use that same number. And then if the market's not looking good because everyone rushed to it because, hey, there's all this money to be made, you're going to triple your money and then everyone just gets bored of it, then you can't fucking sell it. So you, the price has gone down. So you sell it for two things that whose value has gone down to replace in a fungible way for the original thing that you had and then you still haven't made any money. You've just got two cheaper things that amount to the same value as what you had originally bought. So that would not be a good situation to find yourself in investing in this and then you can't sell it you can only trade it for other ones but that's kind of i don't understand economics but it's weird that he used that example of trading it for two similar things because apparently these things are non-fungible and you can't trade it so maybe you'll make sense of that in the comments below but basically peter schiff big brain economist he says nfts are bad as for me if you're an artist and you've got a bit of traction online and you're already making a bit of money and considering this is kind of meme worthy and it's all colorful and it's basically based on memes, then holy shit, why not just upload a few NFTs and see what happens? And at least you might be inspired to create some new art. And in my world, that is a good thing since I am an artist. There you have it, NFT. So I want to say thanks to my mate, the Crypto Queen, for telling me about NFTs, awakening me to them and it's been interesting reading about them and getting my head around this this fascinating topic who fucking knows where we will be in the next 20 years my friends i've been johnny massacre and i'm not going to cover fukushima today because i'm running out of time i will cover that on monday and i tell you what mate you bet be back for the next episode otherwise i'll be coming around your ass please make sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell because that is what all those other cunts tell you to do layers